Hey everybody, this is the Grumpy Old Guy Gaming. Uh, happy Fragment Friday. Um, this is not going to be a typical upload. Uh, one of the more raw moments, I suppose, in my brief YouTubing life. Uh, I'll get more on that later. If, if you're really not into sticking around for that stuff, I get it. I typically wouldn't be either. So I'll give you a heads up before I get into all that. And, uh, in the meantime, we'll just be doing this dungeon run here. We're on the mackerel server. Have a bit of fun with fish. Uh, right away we run into an iron ball freak after getting all buff. Just hack away at him. He's not going to do too much damage to us, and our health regen's going to recover most of it by the time we're out of it. Thunder Element Field at night, you see that beautiful full moon in the background just sort of lighting up the desert. I find I just don't see enough nighttime fields. I've got to start searching these things out. Deal with the hammer shark there. It uh it put the beating on us. Kind of wasn't expecting that given how water attuned my equipment kind of is at the moment, but hit us pretty hard. Pop a potion, keep going. Run into another iron ball freak here. I feel safer with the larger monsters. Gonna get decent experience for it in a one on one fight. You always feel better about your odds coming out of those. You don't have to worry about that rush of attacks that just drops your health. You have to worry about one shots occasionally, especially when you're up against, you know the dragons or worms of similar level with those breath attacks. Here's another hammer shark. And we're hitting it for solid damage. It's not like we're dinking and dunking this thing, hitting around 250 a pop on the good hits. Certainly not complaining there because happiness is a good spear. I think that's one of those sayings you'd find on a t-shirt in a magazine as well as an accurate description of a nice, nice level 50 weapon. Here we come up on some metal goblins. They look like Slayer fans. So I slayed them. Awful joke. Let's put the count at one. Here's a trap chest. Let's go ahead and open it up. I will admit beforehand I did not get my inventory set before this. I like to minimize my spare items beforehand, so we'll be running afoul of the uh, 40 item limit later on in this video. Another Iron Ball Freak and another chance to show off our uh, spear wielding technique. Staying clear of the skills just in case I have to do any like emergency rebuffing or what have you actually don't have a healing spell dedicated on the shortcuts for my long arm right now because I've got the health and mana regens and then I've got an attack and defense buff and that's up in my L1 block. I didn't want to deviate too much from the pattern I've got set up. Right now my characters are about 80 to 85 percent similar on the shortcuts. There's a couple differences with my wave master but my Blade Master and Long Arm are pretty much identical in how their blocks are set up. Just the specific skills are different, obviously. But one major difference is all the buffs I have for my Long Arm that I use regularly are on its on the uh, character's equipment, whereas my Blade Master I've switched entirely to Speed Charms and the Physical Bloods. just got to a point where I found I was, you know, nearing level 40 and still had a fire lizard on for Aptorv. Um, veering back from this detour to another Iron Ball Freak. And we'll, we'll do the usual business with it. Clearing these portals out in a hurry. At least it felt like it was in a hurry. Had a little chain of misses there, getting our health down to around half. This is, I want to say, the second dungeon I ran after dying last time with my long arm. 
I was at level 22, then dropped down to 21, and didn't quite recover the level out of the dungeon I ran. It's sort of my vengeance run. Um, just get that weird compulsion to make one run to make it right afterwards. So my speed charm wears off there. Don't know why I never notice it when I'm playing. I'm just not looking at the lower left corner. I figure my vitals are there. About the only thing I'm looking for is the bars to turn red. Aside from that, the rest of it's just sort of not there for me when I play. Get an Aptorma there. Magical accuracy. Generally trying not to cast spells with my long arm. Will see me breaking that too later. Just giving everything away before we get going here. Got our level back, so we're level 22 again. Up to 467 on the hit points and a nice 99 point skill point pool. There's our last portal. Couple more metal goblins dispatched with ease. Picking up our quality 7 experience per. And a trap chest yields us a nuker. Time to hop on the noble grunt and uh, just coast our way over to the dungeon. Quick reminder for those of you watching this, maybe getting into Fragment for the first time, uh, .hack.org, that's the uh, .hack network website. I'll have it linked in the comments, has a wonderful guide for setting up Fragment. Feel free to check it out. Also check out .hack network on Discord and Fragment Resurgence on Discord. Kicking off the first floor here, got a little semicircle room, plenty of breakable objects, and as we know, I like to smash things. Pick up a sports drink and the lovers. Decide to take the whole way around the bend, pick up a healing elixir out of another jar before heading further down on the map to a 90 degree turn room. That yields us our first indoor Iron Ball Freak. How the hell he got in the room, I don't know. He's twice the size of the door, but this is a magical world, and we could just assume they found a way to get him there. You could say the portal. I prefer to think of the portal as just sort of like a magical sort of invisibility curtain thing, so to me it's more humorous having a wizard like sitting there kind of nudging the Iron Ball Freak along like if you dock. Really dock down. I mean, there's no way he's getting through those doors. Who am I kidding? Come up on an ogre here. Really wish there was a more vivid description, but it's an ogre. It's big, it's green, it's ogreish. Kinda looks like it has chicken feet. Just noticing that now, because I was more focused on how badly it was kicking my butt here in this battle. Had a little wave of misses there early, and as you can see, it got me down just above 100 hit points. I was a little worried there. Obviously, I could just pop a potion if I felt I was in really dire need, but, uh... Kinda cutting it close on this run. Here we're up against another Iron Ball Freak. You'll notice I did pop that potion just as the portal was opening because I really wasn't sure what was coming out of this and I didn't want to take that chance. All's well that ends well though. We finish it off in this little four-way intersection before heading up. A little dead-end corridor here. Yields us a couple metal goblins. Finally, decide to hit our attack combo. Takes out two of the three and wounds the third, which allows us an easy kill there to finish. Loot the chest and then head down to the opposite side. It's another dead end room. It's going to be one of the ones with the little pool cut out to your right side as you enter. Only we're in a thunder element room, so it's just kind of a pit. This time the combo takes out all three and simultaneously extra badass points on that one, but no chests or anything drops, so we simply grab a copy of the Hanged Man out of the chest on the altar, 
and make our way back, first through the intersection, and then through the corridor I forgot to announce, which is where we face that ogre. That takes us to the 90 degree turn room and then the semicircle room. I'll grab a drink real quick here. Mm. Got this beautiful blackberry wine today. Usually don't have wine when I'm recording. Usually doing some tea or something. But tonight was definitely a wine kind of night. Second floor now, going to take a moment, reapply the buffs. Reminding you that if you're a fan of Fragment content, there are uh, going to be a couple channels I link down below here. Uh, maybe this isn't your cup of tea, maybe you're just looking for all the Fragment content you could get. Um, check those guys out. The great thing about this community is we've had quite a few people uploading content at various points, and I like to think that no matter how analytically you look at it as we enter this L-shaped room here, run into another ogre. Early miss there sort of scared me, but we end up faring a lot better in the subsequent hits. The occasional mess here or there, but we're hitting far more consistently and for a bunch of damage, so this ogre really doesn't get a chance to put the hurt on us too much. But I like to think when you're uploading content, when you're making videos like this, that you're putting part of yourself out there. So it's neat to see other people's work, uh, see a little bit about them. Here we come up against a bee assault, and those are those monsters them and the moths that have such high physical evasion that I just feel more comfortable chucking spells at them. Here we're up against a <laughs> a quartet of metal goblins and we fell them all in this semicircle room with the same combo. Once again maxing out our badass points, dropping four enemies at once. And then instantly cashing those all in as we try to attack a trapped chest, and it doesn't work. After disarming the chest, we do pick up another copy of Nuker, which is an item I really wish I would have taken the time to look at. Would have made a real nice description here. Disarm another chest in the subsequent room, and we pick up a Resurrect. That one's easy. If somebody in your party is dead, use that and they won't be. Coming up on a large sideways T-shaped room. A little choppy here. But still, not too bad. Take out the goblin and then throw some ice cubes at the bee assault. Finish that battle up nice and easy. Chest at the top of the T here, so we'll take that and then check out the little treasure room above it. It's got some jars. We'll We'll clip the one right in front of the chest, grab a thunderbolt out of the chest, and then finish off that front row before heading back down. Gonna take the uh, erstwhile stem of the tea, if it was facing the correct direction. And that's gonna be another dead end room, but it's got a portal in it, and we're here to 100% this dungeon, so here we go. Some more metal goblin action, and uh, some more quick falling take them both down, the pair that were coming out of the portal, and move on our way as though nothing happened. So far it's been pretty smooth through this run. Coming on down here. Got across this little T-shaped room, and then we got a small room with a treasure chest leading to the stairs down to the third floor. Floor 3 now. Once again a fairy orb, and a couple seconds to redistribute buffs. If you are a fan of the content on this channel, I certainly do thank you for the support. And keep an eye out here. 
Um, this, of course, will be dropping on Friday, as it is our Fragment Friday run. Also, do weekly uploads on Sunday, The Weekend Warrior, and try to get one or two videos out during the week. Also, do some retro video gaming and some live streaming, be it Fragment or perhaps .hackgu last recode on the PS4. Moving into a uh, small T-shaped room. This is our first look at the Mantis in this dungeon in particular. These guys hit hard and have an attack buff spell, so always something to look at. Also got quite a reach on them. Arms just come out and thwap at you. Medium sized corridor and we come upon Ogre number three. This one wastes little time trying to drop the hammer on us. We are undeterred, though. Taking our lumps, but we're given just as good as we're getting, if not a little better, and before you know it, the ogres had more than enough. It goes down for the knockout, we pick up 19 experience and live to tell the tale. Disarm the trap chest that spawns in its place and pick up an Avenger. Moving into the next room down. This will help to pivot us from moving down to moving back to the left side of the map as you're looking at the screen. Here we've got a bee army and a couple mantis. Just sort of comboing off here, just spreading the damage as much as possible. I figure the more overall I could hit everything, the better going to wear down the skill points a heck of a lot quicker than the hit points, but I didn't want to risk this battle getting into one of these things where a mantis gets off screen, gets an attack buff, and is hitting me for far more damage than I could recover. So it was a little awkward and janky looking, but we did get through. Pick up a nuker out of the first chest, and an avenger out of the second. So far, the gear is being nice and consistent with us, and probably will sell for a great deal more than you could normally expect out of a dungeon this level. As is the magic of some of the keywords to be found on this server and others. Thanks again to VNS for putting up the mackerel server for us to use on this run. She also hosts the V's Place server. backtracking a little to get to the other side of this third floor. Pick up an immature egg and then we're going to move into one of those V-shaped rooms. Uh, the right side just has a small corridor leading the steps down so we're going to go left where there's a square shaped room with a portal dead in the middle and a couple chests to loot afterwards. Portal yields us a mantis and a bee assault so we're just going to go ahead and uh, make sure the B Assault is put on ice right away before taking our wax at the Mantis. Once again, easy come, easy go as far as the enemies are concerned. Pick up an artisan soul there, and that is item number 41 for us. Unfortunately, I wasn't paying attention when I grabbed the chest, and I didn't realize how full my inventory was. Did not realize it was an artisan soul, and ended up giving it up. Here we're in a long corridor that leads to a dead end, but not before hitting a monster portal. We end up running right through where the mantis spawns, and now we're fighting it from behind. So enjoy this 10 or so seconds of the backside of a mantis. Come out victorious, 15 experience to us, and a little jog back to the square room. Again, three floors, and certainly no complaints, we're cruising right along. Time to head down to floor number four. Fairies have gone ahead and told us what's in the rest of this floor. Certainly nice of them. 
suppose that was the least they could do for us, setting them free out of that captivity of whatever that orb was. Reapply our buffs one last time. Not that they really needed it, I just like things to be as fresh as possible when I start a floor one soloing. You hate that moment where you hit a portal and right away that buff that's been keeping you alive just fades off. Here we hit a V-shaped room and I'm seeing what looks like the treasure shape, uh, the treasure room at the bottom there, so I'm going to take the side entrance first. And instantly sort of regret this because we run into a Goyle Meneer. Those of you who are familiar to uh, my uploads know my supreme disdain for the Meneer and their ability to resurrect monsters, so instantly that's top priority. Then the Bee Assault, which of course has the ability to poison if you let it go unchecked, and also hits for a ton if you're not careful. Just hits that like five hit rapid succession, da 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 da, and you know, your health can drop if you're not careful. Eventually finishing off with the Mantis there. Gonna fortune wire this chest open. And pick up an Owl Crest. I believe that's the second one we've picked up. Again, really generous treasure drops here. Not complaining with that. Moving up to an L-shaped room here. It's going to take us rightward after the bend, but first at the bend we have a B Assault that I seem to be incapable of hitting with successive ice spells. Missed on the first, missed on the third, but hit on the second and fourth. So we use an antidote on the poison since there's nothing left in the battle that could re-poison us later and then go to work on the Mantis. By now you should know we've got more than enough edge on the Mantis that it's not really much of a threat. Pick up a thunder call out of that chest. Move to the next room where we have yet another portal with a Meneer. This one's just accompanied by a bee assault. Now the Meneer are fairly easy to hit, and as long as it's just one per portal, you can just prioritize them and get them out of the way. So we do get two out of three hits with the ice spells on the B Assault, taking it down. Get a Thunder Call there. And a chest pops up, so we'll go ahead and loot that and grab a Lumberjack. That sounded a little strange. We'll discard the Ice Storm Scroll, because I'm sure Lumberjack is an item, is probably some sort of weapon, probably a heavy axe weapon. And it's going to sell for a bit more than a level 1 scroll. Once again, Meneer and Bee Assault in the following room. This is a dead end corridor. Um, taking out the Meneer, poisoned by the Bee Assault, so we're just going to chuck spells at it and hope for the best. Two won't take it down, but the third does. And then it's safe to pop the antidote and move on our merry way. No chests are dropping, but our buffs did, so we're going to take a moment and get our skill point and hit point regenerations back, respectively. The physical attack and defense buffs and the speed charm are still holding up, though, and we've already cleared what looks to be about half of this fourth floor. So I'm kind of going to roll the dice here in the interest of time, and not going to bother reapplying everything. Just go on our way allow things to recover naturally while backtracking a bit here. We're already back at the V-shaped room. Grab the treasure chest on the bottom half and move to a square-shaped room. Got a portal in the middle. This is going to open up to just be a regular chest that's going to yield a moon scroll. And then we pick up a thunder call out of the chest in the corner. Now, side entrance leads to what I'm fairly certain is going to end up being the treasure room at this point. Bottom entrance leads to a diagonal hallway where we pick up a golden egg. Two more portals to go. Here is one. It's just a chest that gives us a plasma gale. I rapidly click through and almost lose all of my healing potions, so that would have been dumb. Instead, decide to trade my moon scrolls for the plasma gale. And then I pick up a Thunderbolt. Moving into this dead-end room here, we've got one more portal. And it's going to be a pair of Mantis and a Meneer. 
really wanted to just go after the Mantis there. But Muneer is top priority. They start dancing around on me. Eventually have to pop a potion because the damage is just too heavy from the two Mantis. But we get things back under control. Take out one Mantis and in a one-on-one -on -one fight, even at 150 hit points, I feel pretty good. Now, I did say I'd give fair warning, so here comes a little bit of sentimentality. I will apologize in advance. Um, got some news that kind of bummed me out today on a, on a professional level, but then on a more personal level as I thought about through the day. Uh, an old co-worker had passed away, and I don't know, I didn't give it too much thought during the day, just too much going on with the holiday season, but uh, definitely gave me a bit, a bit of a pause there for a second. In fact, I'm going to pause the video here, if you'll permit me this time, and if not, like I said, just skip it. promise this won't happen in the future, but before we get to the chest here, I just wanted to say, you know, way too often you look back and you think about the fact that you never really did have a worthwhile final conversation with someone. Last time you saw him you may have just waved, you may have seen each other on the street and not said anything. May have just, you know, told a dumb joke and walked away. But it is important whenever you speak with people to kind of try and value that time. Um, don't really know where I'm going besides that. I'm not an overly big person in terms of speech and sentimentality, but one thing that's kind of been nagging in my head is well, really trying to make every moment have its own sort of importance, if you will. Um, that's enough of me trying to be you know, been philosophical here. Let's just loot the chest and finish this video. Got a little weird here. I think somebody was trying to get on the server uh, about the time I was leaving. I got an Omega Guard. We'll go ahead and make a quick swap out. Some, I forget even what I... It's probably a scroll of some type. Yeah, I end up throwing out the lovers for the Omega Guard, and then I just skip the Artisan Soul and uh, Hail Cross. That was a dumb move of mine, but I skipped it as well. Uh, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, this has been a Grumpy Old Guy Gaming with a Fragment Friday run. If you are running on Fragment Friday, make sure to party up, say hi. Just check out some of the stuff going on. I know there's always something going on, and we'll catch you in the next one.